We got one. Welcome friends, fans and enemies to a Zane Destiny video. So we managed to win a match out of three opponents. We got one. I was absolutely, oh, I was ecstatic to say the least. Bear in mind it was the first match, so I went on a pretty big high, but then after that we lost two more games against two other opponents. Uh, did still learn a lot, had a bit of fun, though I think next time I'll probably be a bit more less little less lenient when it comes to the opponent's rewinding plays but hey ho it was all there for fun so i'm going to go through the updated deck profile uh still running mostly the same sort of concept but did make a lot of changes to well make the deck better so i'm going to start off with the digitama so we stuck with the same formula of four upa and one cora so uh to be honest, seeing Cora was kind of like a, it, it wasn't helpful. So I'm kind of, I'm going to be eager swapping this out for another guy. Um, Upamon didn't exactly get much of his effects off during a matchup with a, a red deck. Uh, that was mainly because I, I couldn't draw any rookies. And even if I did, there was a lot of outs of me. So... Red deck is definitely an issue against this, uh, with this yellow. Uh, that and some efficient rookie rush, which is, it was fun. It was fun to play against the rookie rush. Um, the blue deck I played against, uh, I can't remember the concept, but you know, blue likes to remove digital evolution sources. That was a little bit of a grindy game and the amount of recovery that I do have in this deck it managed out the blue deck, but the red deck, I needed much more recovery. So those would be the changes that I'll get to later on. But looking to swap out Koro, probably pick Mon when it comes out in BT5. Uh, Upa, I might bump them down, but we'll see. So that's the Digitama. Uh, I'm going to start off with the level 7s, because explaining some of the reasoning is a little easy this way. Voldorarm, I managed to get him out in one game, I believe it was against the blue deck. Um, didn't So didn't really get to play him as much again, but he did appear a lot in my security, and it did make me survive a few extra rounds to seemingly turn the tide a little. Um, so I'll be keeping him as he is. He He's either good in security or he's good or I'm actually get, able to get him out. I did have an extra idea for an option card I was playing, which I'll get into later. For the Megas, we play the one slash. Only managed to get his effect off once and didn't really see enough of him. But I I, I may decide to take him out. Uh, two of the War Greys, very, very helpful. <laughs> Um, if I can get another Wargrave on, I might play three. And two Masters. So, Mastermon was very... Um, uh, you could probably tell I'm playing more for an aggressive yellow. Either I get out Wargrave to do some security attacks and minus in DP, along with Shine Grey. The plan was with Shine Grey is to play him and hopefully get a Volder up, but unfortunately that didn't really happen so much. Uh, Mastermon was to get some more either level 4s or level 3s out for recovery or protection, but also it's just to get more bodies on the board and to freely remove security without any worries of security um, effects. Um, again, I wasn't particularly happy with Slash. Good effect of minus an 8,000 DP once you digivolve, but didn't see him enough. And I think if I want more consistency, I even may try and get another Mastermon or another War Greymon. Or swap Slash for a Magnadramon for additional rookie play, but also a potential recovery if I decide to hard play them. So 
next tournament I will be looking to do something with Slash. And depending on the funds, whether I can get another Wargrave or Master. Okay, for the Ultimates. This one is where it got a little, uh, little hairy in some situations. So I stuck with, well, Wargrave. So I played four of them. Didn't get a chance to see enough of him. Which was strange since I was playing four. Um, didn't get a very good chance to play most of his Digiburst effects either. Because against the blue deck... Um, of course, they would remove digital illusion sources, so I didn't have enough to do a Digiburst of two. Um, against the red deck, I didn't even have an option. Well, I didn't even draw many rookies. So I was literally hard playing a uh, level four to get to a level five. Couldn't Digiburst. Um, I may bump him down or swap him for another. Uh, one thing I will would like to do is um, get another Andrew Woman. So this particular Andrew Woman um, didn't see enough of her, but she did come clutch in a red uh, a game against a red to last a couple of rounds. So the Digivolve minus two to security attack, that was helpful. Um, didn't get a chance to do the inherited effect of playing a level uh, three yellow from hand when attacking because I didn't get a chance to Digivolve above her. She got outed. So if I can get a hold of another one of these, I would cut down War Growl by one. Or if I can't, because recovery was a little bit of an issue for me, even though I did a lot of recovery against the uh, blue deck, I may have decided to play another of the starter deck, Angie Woman, which has a Digivolving effect that if I have three or less security, I recover one. So I either may decide to play another, or obviously cut down War, either play another of the BT3 Angie Woman, or play out of the star um and Telemon, funny enough even though i only played one of him i i wouldn't say consistently but he was a little regular and he was helpful when i didn't have any rookies and at a hard player uh, level four i could easily digivolve because of his level two effect so i think just because of his level two evolution costs I might decide to keep him as just a one for emergencies. Um, if it turns out next time after I've made any changes that he becomes a little bricky, I may swap him into whatever I'm missing out of these two, whatever I decide. But uh, that was my ultimates. Um, War Growl, even though I would love to be able to get his effect off a lot, Dependent on what sort of deck you get played against, or if you don't even draw well, he's kind of a clog, which is which is a little unfortunate. Um, champions wise, uh, changed the ratios in this a little, so I was playing two Tirarimon, and I was only playing three Pidos, and the one Unimon. So the issue I found the first time was. Uh, Tirei Ramon and Pidamon were level sixes, uh, sorry, cost of six. So they were difficult to bring out, whereas Unimon is only a five, and that did allow me to memory choke an opponent one time. So he was only, a, I think I had quite a decent amount of memory, I think at about six. So I was able to play him for five and Digivolve with uh, Antilamon, giving my opponent one. But of course they had a Tamer card, so it didn't really matter, matter so much. But um, I think I might keep this ratio the same. Um, I'm not 100% sure because the other champion I was playing or level four was the Gatoman. So this card's effect is um, on play. Oh, right, sorry about that, guys. I was expecting a delivery today and I thought that might have been it. Um, so yeah, back to where I was. Uh, this card's a particular Gatoman. Um, on play if you have three of your security you recover one and if you have a purple digimon in play it gets blocker which is the reason why i played like um a lower ratio of blockers initially uh, my hope was to get this uh, guy out once i had mastermon out in play or even one of my other purples out in play to just to help survive a bit. Also a little bit of recovery. Unfortunately, didn't manage to get his effect off all that much. I always found that it was either not in my trash um, or it, 
or I just never saw it, which was a little unfortunate. If I did, was able to get more, I will play more in the deck. Probably cut down the Unimon, who knows. Um, but the there was quite a few times where my level 4s just wasn't appearing. So I don't think that's the fault of the ratio, because I am playing about 8 champions. I think that's more of the draw potential. So not only do I feel that I need a little bit more recovery, I need a little bit more draw potential as well. So any changes that I might decide to do in the future, uh, either make Digivolution more consistent, that way I can actually top more cards, or find more uh, precise draw engines. Uh, getting down to the rookies, I did play three Bushi. Uh, unfortunately, didn't get his effect off as regular as I'd liked. So the idea was was to get Mastermon, bring out Bushi, who has Rush, who can attack as soon as they're brought into play. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't get that much, and it ended up being a uh, Digivolve onto Digitama just to draw a card. So I might end up bumping him down maybe just to one and play a different rookie, uh, something that allowed me to draw a little more. And getting on to the drawing a little more, I did play three Pulsemon. Um, this was probably the best purchase that I made for the deck. Um, if you don't know, Pulsemon has two effects, um, depending on the number of security cards you have. So you have three or more, you draw a card. If you have three or less, you gain a memory. So if you had three, you get both effects. Uh, the thing I either found was um, the way I was playing, I ended up getting more of the memory side of it. So I needed, because I didn't have sufficient recovery, I was reducing my security stack with like Blinding Ray, etc, etc, and not getting the draw power side of it. Although I will decide to, I will keep S4, um, it was nice to see him in hand. It, no matter the situation I felt, it was always good to hard play him. Either through Master Fawn effect or Andrew Orman effect, if it ever did happen. So Pulse Mon was definitely good. I just needed to manage security a lot more efficiently. Uh, I did have three Lotmon. This is another good purchase on my side, I felt. Uh, Lotmon's effect that on play I can look at the top card of my security and I can either uh, I can add it to my hand if I do I draw one from my deck so it's kind of like a uh, an additional draw engine so even though I had I would say semi-consistent draw capabilities I still felt I wasn't drawing enough especially for a particular option card that I was playing that I'll probably regret playing too much of. Um, and I had two Salamon. Uh, Salamon was good. Didn't really get her off on the uh, Mastermon effect. It was more of the from the raising area and just blind attacking. Uh, on it's, it's an effect of on deletion. If I have three of your security recovery one, I may decide that if I do reduce Bushi, I'll probably up this to three. Just have a bit more consistency. Uh, just for more recovery, basically. And the two Gazi. He didn't see much uh, reasonable action. I mean, he did come out and play, but the opponents I was playing against didn't exactly pay, play many um, uh, non-tamer memory boosts. Everyone was just uh, tamers only, it seemed like. Uh, but I think I might, I'm in two minds whether to, if I do increase my chances of draw capabilities, I may bump him down to one, but then I run a risk that he'll end up in security and he'll never see play, or I might keep him the same. I'm not sure. It's, it's a bit of a difficult one. You can't go wrong with two, but I did feel that because of the particular tournament I was in, two might have not been efficient enough and I could have played like another Salah or another card that can give me more draw power. So those are my rookies.
again we'll make changes to well make it a little more consistent now we get to the options uh this card i either saw it too many times or i really needed it so against the uh blue deck i did see i think two of them one of them is in security it was good because i was able to combo off of another card that i'll explain a little later um so it was definitely good to have unfortunately with the purple deck um hardly saw it at all uh, as well as the red deck so i'm not 100 percent certain what i will decide to do because if i did decide to up this to four i may see it too many times and i'd be tempted to play it too many times but then there was a couple of occasions where it wasn't security and it was absolute dud so i'm not sure what to do with blinding ray if i had the space i might play one more but we'll see um this might have been my regretful decision because it did me so well last game i decided to play three eden's javelin now don't get me wrong eden's javelin did me a lot of good work um like i said i had issues with draw power and playing this allowed me to draw more cards but also the additional effect of reducing the opponent's uh dp to zero it did get rid of blockers it did make uh overpowering certain digimon quite efficient the only issue was um it is a high cost but i felt like i probably needed to play an additional card that helped say for example i believe it's um Labramon with the inherited effect that when a digimon is reduced to zero dp you get to draw a card i felt if i played this down to two and made any other rookie changes and played Labramon, this would make things a little more efficient because not only am i drawing a card with eden's javelin Labramon's inherited effect would also allow me to draw additional cards making the next even javelin a little bit more deadly so i will make an alteration to this definitely a good card it's good for um it did actually wipe out a couple of level fives which i was really pleased about and of course blockers as well uh but yeah i will be either keep the number the same if i've made other changes and i've got space for it or my bump it down to two and the last option card was a little bit techy i played a heat viper um because i had a kari i was able to play it as well as the other purple digimon like massamon and that the idea was for this was to uh prevent any type of rookie rush that I may have came across or to eliminate any blockers but also it was to be used in conjunction with chaos folder realm because when chaos mon is deleted you gain three memory that would be more for a desperate situation where i just needed to get rid of a blocker but also keep it my turn so to say um it's not it's not consistent i didn't see this at all during the uh rookie rush purple deck i played against it would have been really helpful for that it did get played against the red deck but um i had no way to recover enough security to well to basic work on from that so unfortunately even though it was kind of an interesting tech it did surprise one of my opponents um i think i will decide to cut this out unfortunately uh, but it was uh interesting to play uh eden's javelin and binding ray definitely the mvps in that option card thing. uh did have 40k uh godsend absolute legend um i did feel playing four might have been a bit too bricky but uh because of my poor draw capabilities i saw him enough so i didn't see him not enough i didn't see him too much i saw him enough so there might be a chance that i might learn that i might have to bump this down to three if i do uh improve my chances of drawing but even then having it as security and just having it go off with kari who has the effect that once the security is reduced 
through any means I gain a memory, uh, it was nice to get this off. Um, Kari did swap over to my turn from the opponents a couple of times, so I will be keeping her at uh, two. Um, I kind of wish there was an easier way of bringing her out, but unfortunately it's either hope that she's in security, which she was uh, for one of the matches, uh, or just hard play for free, which isn't terrible because, like I said, most of my opponents were playing Tamer cards, which they would end up with three anyway. So if I was at zero memory and I just hard play Kari, if they did decide to attack my security, I'll at least get something back, potentially making it my turn, which against the red deck, it did actually switch the game to my turn because the opponent attacked once, they left that at zero memory, it went to one memory and it was my turn. Yeah, there was probably a possibility that the opponent would have left me with more memory if I had left it alone, if I didn't tap her, but you kind of run that risk with Kari. So you can either choose not to tap her and keep it your opponent's turn, then potentially giving you more memory, or you tap her and make it your turn, but only leaving you one memory. Uh, if TK was on the field, it would have been a bit more helpful but unfortunately c'est la vie so that was the updated deck profile um my favorite game was obviously against the blue deck i honestly can't remember all the cards they were playing but it was to the situation where it got grindy um and as the game went Further, even though they were getting rid of my Digivolution sources, Shakuramon. Oh gosh, Shakuramon. So they were playing Shakuramon, which basically says that if I have a Digimon that has no Digivolution sources, say for example, um, Bushiaku, I can't attack. So I had these bodies, I, I think I must have had about seven Digimon, but unfortunately, because they had no Digivolution sources, they couldn't attack. So that's when Salomon came in from the raisin area because it had a timer underneath it could attack i was just basically swinging to recover one and i ended up recovering i believe possibly about five times there was a point where they could have swung for game but i had a sala come out and i believe i've managed to make her into a blocker afterwards because somehow she survived or someone else survived so against the blue deck it was very fun the purple deck, unfortunately, um, I did brick a little. I was uh, rookied out. Um, and then even then, when I started drawing rookies, I didn't have the right champions to play. And yeah, that, that kind of locked me out. And of course, they were playing Rookie Rush with a uh, Anubismon and a uh, combination of uh, Digiburst, Nailbone. So basically they were playing a deck that I was thinking of creating, which was interesting because it was kind of like I was playing against myself in a way. Um, but yeah, unfortunately that was the first match against the purple deck. It was just a complete whitewash. Um, and the uh, red deck, I did, I think it was 2-1 to him. Um, I, I did... Afterwards, I did realize that I probably outplayed myself. There was a couple of times where I was thinking maybe I should have went this route instead to, I think I was worried about recovery and draw power. So with Mastermon, instead of going through one route, which could have got me two um, ways of recovery, I ended up doing one and then realizing, oh, I can't attack with him to, uh, Get a recovery because uh, I was played a Salomon instead, which I felt if I played a Bushi, it probably would have turned the tide a little. I did also. Um, I'm still new to the tournament scene, so even at the back of my mind, I should be like, if a person misplays, if as soon as they hit the card on the table, that's it. But um, there was a couple of times where a person played a Digimon. And then we're like, oh, wait, no, I'll do this one. I'm like, okay, that's fine. Um, there was another time when uh, I had a Digimon, uh, I believe it was Mastermon that attacked. 
of course I should have played because uh, the way it should be is that when you're attacking on attack effects of the player's turn should go first and I believe I had the Anjan Woman effect go off actually so I went to bring back a I believe a Bushi now the opponent got a little uh, hasty and activated a security before I declared my when attacking ability so they decided to um, they it went into Guy Force and they decided to destroy my Mastermon and I was like okay right um, I'm bringing a Bushi and then they decided to change their mind change their target so I probably should have got a judge decision on that but then the rulings are in the official TCG is that the player's turn the when attacking effects should go off first so the opponent should have waited before turning over security so I think next time I'll have to make it more clear even though I was trying to there was times where I needed to slow play down to make sure the opponent was hearing my effects because some people are a bit like da 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 you know blah but I needed to like slow things down and say to him I'm attacking this is activating so I think next time the opponent I have to be quicker to say to the opponent well, don't do security yet because I'm doing my when attacking effects first or I'm doing this effect first um because I felt those two instances where I just let the opponent rewind um, playing a Digimon and the security issue, I felt things may have been slightly different. I don't know. I, I mean, hindsight, you know, everyone has hindsight, but it's still a learning curve. So all I have to do is just be a bit more confident in myself when actually doing things um it which is probably going to be difficult for me because in all fairness uh i was trying to talk myself out of even going to the tournament yesterday uh I, it must have been like at least a couple of hours i was already ready i was ready to go and it it took a lot to actually get myself going to be like go go to the tournament and I'm not sure if that's anxiety or some sort of like social awkwardness, but I'm glad I went in the end because I find when I'm in a situation, if I just go for it and I'm already there, I'm fine for the rest of the day. And I did have a few more conversations with people, did have a bit of a laugh. Um, so I was glad I went in the end and I'm happy I performed a lot better. Of course, it started on a high, then ended on a uh, uh, but I still had fun. There will be changes to the deck, and yeah, that's everything I got. So, I hope you enjoyed this video. I will be looking to improve this yellow deck a little more. Um, I think once I get to a point where I'm not gonna, I don't, I'm not gonna win like a local. I'm already settled on that. I think if I get to a point where I'm consistent with this deck or whatever I play, I think I'll switch over to purple because I do have some ideas for purple, but I might go a different route due to the other guy that was playing the same uh, theory concept that I was planning to make. So I might do something different on the purple deck side of things. Might surprise a few people as well, who knows. Um, and then after that, once I get confident with that one, um, I'll try and make a consistent hybrid deck between purple and yellow so yeah hope you enjoyed that video guys i'll see you again soon i should get around to reviewing the cycleon model kit uh, not model kit figure um i am expecting yugo king's court to arrive some point as well but i'm waiting on something to come in stock until it can be delivered so <laughs> Yeah, I, I can't be sure when the next video is going to be. Uh, I do have a lot of coursework in my HCS course to do. Um, work has also been a little, um, I don't want to say unstable, but we've currently got some work going on, uh, maintenance works. So we're currently working in two different hospitals. 
So I wish I can say I will have a consistent schedule, but I feel that if I force myself to do something, it's not interesting. So yeah, uh, see you again next time, guys. Keep smiling.